Hey guys, welcome to Mosaic. Uh, this is the podcast where we try to look into hardships and hard seasons and try to find the beauty and to take those shards of glass uh, that we feel have broken our lives and try to see a different perspective. Um, this is a very fun podcast. We get to laugh a lot, we get to cry a lot, and we get to learn a lot. And we do it for you in real time. None of us are teachers. None of us are professing that we live a perfect life. I do. <laughs> Daniel's professing it. But is professing I the right word? I had to finish my water. I do not. <laughs> that was the end of my sentence. Is professing the right word? Professing, that's a big word for speaking. Yeah, like, yeah, we're not saying that we're, we have anything put together or that we Nothing. know what we're doing with life at Absolutely all. none. So it's a experimental podcast where we get to have fun yeah, and try to find the beauty in things. So with that being said, um, one of my favorite dynamics of Mosaic is that Daniel is a planner and he doesn't know <laughs> what is going on. No idea. But I feel really good today because I have my phone with me. <laughs> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, to all of our Mosaic, what do we call them? The Mosers. The Mosers. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what we're going to call to them. To all yet. of our Mosasauruses out there. We <laughs> all are of our shards. <laughs> all of our broken shards. I just, I feel like it doesn't bring enough value to them. <laughs> all our broken pieces of glass. Broken, are, you said broken ships a while ago. That's yeah. not what I heard. Oh. And so all of my broken ships. We were so. You mean uh, hardships? Hardships. Hardships. We're going to call you. Heard you heard the other word. I heard the other word. <laughs> this is going to happen a lot because Sam says, says these new words and I have no clue what you're talking about. Hey, I say words that don't exist yet. So <laughs> I'm also, here's another thing. I'm pretty sure, and, and there's probably like a lot of comments about this already. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was saying catastrophizing wrong. <laughs> and and so it really is. I think it castrating. is castrating. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I knew it was that the whole time. No, I I heard it in a movie and they said catastrophizing. Catastrophizing? But I feel like that's harder to say. But it makes sense cuz it's a catastrophe and you're fantasizing, which is a fantasy. Yeah. But catastrophizing as I think the correct way to say it. And I don't know. Well, like I said, we're all trying to figure this out in real time. We don't know. We what could we're just doing. say the the whole definition of it. The whole definition. When you're fantasizing about a catastrophe. Yes, but that takes a long time. <laughs> it's a long I, podcast. I, hey, I'm gonna make up. I'm gonna make up words regardless. Like it's just bound to happen. I do it in everyday life. Where people are like, "That's not a word," and I'm like, "Yeah, all words are made up." Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do it anyway. So, uh, how's your week been? It's been good. I'm still currently sweating because we just like set up all this stuff and we yes. were playing a game in the yard just a little bit ago. And now I'm just like, <laughs> welcome back to Mosaic. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm glad that's the sweat and it's not like the like, what are we going to talk about sweats? <laughs> no, no, I don't have those sweats anymore. Yeah. Uh, Sam showed me that uh, not planning something is actually a lot of fun. Yeah. So now I just don't plan anything. I, I'm curious to know how it's been for you since we started recording last week and like how your uh like your spiritual side of things, how's it been this week? Like have you felt attacked? Have you felt oh. encouraged? Have you felt yeah like we're on the right track or definitely because uh when we first brought this up and you said, Hey, we're gonna start recording um, it seemed like that first week, it was like everything that could go wrong went wrong. And I'm not one to say like the devil is around every um, right or left. He's around <laughs> either one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I'm not one to say that, but at the same time, I'm also very, very aware that there is a real enemy that we come against. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was seemed like when we started this, it was funny because you're like, we're going to talk on fear. And it was like everything that could go wrong for my fear category mm -hmm. was like, hey, let's hit Daniel this week. Yeah. So anyway. That's why I've been curious because I, I purposely withheld what we're going to talk about today. Oh, and I wanted wow. to see if it <laughs> like showed up in your week regardless. Okay, so let me think of some stuff before you tell me what yes. it is. Because Sam really hasn't told me anything. Nothing. In fact, we're having lunch a while ago with our home church here, and I was like, so, like, trying to drop a line of, when we talk about this? He's like, yeah, kind of goes along with what I want to talk about. And I'm like, yeah, why don't you tell me what it is? <laughs> and I will not do it. And he will not do it. But, uh, let's see. This week, the things that have hit the hardest were 
Uh, Legacy, I think the one that really got my heart was like with my kids because we were watching um, Little House on the Prairie the other day. Yeah. Sam loves Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> it is his favorite show. Anyways, um, Michael Landon. And so we're watching the show, and uh, they're talking about heaven on the show, actually. Yeah. And um, actually, no, it was the one we watched before that. It was the it was side crew watching. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I love Little House on the Prairie, but let's let's talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so psych, we're watching that, and on the show they're talking about heaven. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And uh, they're saying, well, to get into heaven, you had to do all these things. You had to be a good person. And so I just like put it on pause, and I was like, asked my kids. I was like, so how do you make it into heaven? Like, do y'all know, uh, you know, how you have eternal life and all this other stuff? And I got some wrong answers, and it scared me a little bit. And I was like, I think I'm doing well on all my other things of like parenting and uh, discipline and teaching and like leaving a legacy. But the one that hit me hard was like, I haven't been talking as much about just simple gospel mm. of things that they need wow. and. Uh, Simple gospel. So the whole theme this week, or actually up toward the weekend, was we're just talking about, um, like even this morning getting ready for church, I was like, I went through the whole creation story and teach them, okay, it was this, this, and this. This is what Jesus did. And so anyway, I don't know how we got off from that, but... No, it's good. Yeah, my my week was basically talking about gospel stuff this week. So So if you were to break down, like, real simple. Real simple. Like elevator pitch gospel. Oh, Yeah. You got two minutes. I got two minutes. That is the longest freaking <laughs> elevator I've ever been on. If I go to a place with an I elevator that sorry. long, you got five seconds. <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> if I get on that elevator, it was probably the one in Vegas that we're on. It oh. literally dropped us 50 floors. They almost so died. How about we say 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Okay. Well, now I'm on the spot. I'm like, okay, <laughs> golly. No, you have as much as you want. But keep it short. Okay, so... I actually ran into this yesterday because I met somebody at the gun show we went to. And when I talk about Jesus or um, bring up eternal life or anything like that, you only have just a short window, which is your elevator pitch. Right. Um, I feel like there's less grace here in the U S than there is in other countries because everybody is like one, you're trying to manipulate me or sell me something Mm -hmm. or um, already know this Jesus already know where I'm going. And so don't mess with me compared to other places I've been or went and witnessed, and uh, they don't know anything about Jesus. So um, 30 seconds or less, I'd be like, I know you don't have a lot of time. I know we're in an elevator. I just wanted to tell you, because if I don't tell you this, I feel like I'm going to regret it. And there's somebody I want to tell you about that actually changed my life. And I was going one way, had no hope. And this person came in my life, and his name is Jesus, and he changed my life. And I can go on and tell you the rest of it, but you could also tell me to be quiet, and that's completely fine because I want to leave the ball in your court. But if you want to know more about it, I know this elevator is about to let off on the bottom floor, and uh, if you'll just give me two minutes, I'll tell you how he changed my life and leave it at that. That's a great way to to dive into it because you're acknowledging, hey, you don't know me from Adam. Yeah. And you might not even know who Adam is. <laughs> and <laughs> who but, is Adam? But you you it's a it's an invitation and I love that aspect of yeah. it. I think that's a beautiful thing because I've always had a problem where people are just they jump to like you're going to hell thing. Yeah. Like the hellfire brimstone and yeah. and there's a saying that like you catch more flies with honey. <laughs> it's but who like, likes flies? No, that's true. <laughs> you know, I, what? Got a bunch of I don't know why we're collecting flies, <laughs> but I got a whole bunch of honey that <laughs> the guy sold me on it. He was really good. He could have been talking about Jesus. Uh, <laughs> but oh like my gosh. the invitation part of it, I yeah. think, is is a beautiful aspect of it. And I love how you how you went that route versus uh, the other routes. And the fact that you already you drop an intriguing line where it's like, this person changed my life. And so you made it personal at the oh, beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I love that because you're like, he's like, Oh, is this like a networking thing? Do oh. I need to know about this person? And yeah, he's like in the lobby waiting. Yeah. Elon Musk so, is down here. waiting for <laughs> Elon Musk changed my life. So. Elon Musk changed my life. And so, yeah, no, I think that, um, I have a personally hard time like share, like sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's 
I feel kind of ashamed of it, actually, now that I think about it. Like, mm. Dive into that. Because Tell me what you define as shame. Like, you're, you're thinking uh-huh. of a memory. Now let's yeah. rabbit troll on that one, because as soon as you said it, I was like, ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. So why do you, th- why do you think you're ashamed of it? Because I don't see you as ashamed of the simple gospel. So I think I'm ashamed that I don't share it often. Ooh, okay. But in the perspective of the elevator pitch. Like okay. I don't do that. What I do is I love people and I have yep. abundance of containment for people. Yes. And that's how like I personally have chosen to express the gospel in my life okay. is to love people as best as I freaking can. And I know like diving into it, like digging in a little bit more, I'm wondering if it's like, but do I have a hard time saying like, I love Jesus and that he can change your life Ooh. versus trying to proximity them to him, you know? Cause like nine times out of 10 people aren't going to come up to you and be like, dude, I've noticed that you're super happy. Like all the time. What's your secret? Mm. Like I've never, I've been alive for 33 years. I've never mm. had anyone come to me and say that, but that's been my approach. Mm-hmm. Um, the closest I ever got is I do have a friend who's agnostic mm. and he makes this statement and it makes me so happy when he does is he, cause he doesn't, he doesn't bash Christianity. Mm. Um, but he will say like something about Christians no. and he always goes, but those are other Christians. They're not you. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a win. Mm-hmm. If in his book, he disassociates me from the, uh, bad agenda Christians or like what he has a bad taste in his mouth about right. Like that's a win to me without me being like, dude, do you know about Jesus? Do you know about Jesus? Like I've never once shared or like tried to like quote unquote save him. Yeah. But I have always, if he's needed help been there for him. Yeah. Um, if he's ever had like, dude, I have a really hard ask. I'm like, dude, let's hear it. Like, yeah. I got you. Like what? There's nothing he can't ask me at any point. Yeah. And if it's outside my reach, I can tell him, sorry, man, I can't help you there. Yeah. If I can, I do. If I can't, I can't help you, but here's someone that I think can. Yeah. yeah. And so I extend as much help as I possibly can to him. And then we just have good times. Like we play a lot of video games together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, ah, my headphones are attacking <laughs> oh, my face. No. Um, and, uh, it's an attack this week. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. It's an attack this week. <laughs> and it's just, they're not comfortable to me right now. They look, good. Uh, but that's also like self-conscious stuff. And so, like I kind of beat myself up a little bit though because I'm just like comparing mm. to the elevator pitch right now. Yeah. And that's really difficult. Um, but it's interesting that you wanted to tackle or like put a magnifying glass on shame, which is what I wanted to talk about this episode is shame. Because, Let's back up real quick yes. on the because you said some gold nuggets in there that I wanna I As just want to pick through. No, 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 no. You did, you did really good. I think I, I want to just clarify one, just to give for you working on your elevator pitch. I want to see how I see this because my elevator pitch and your elevator pitch, meaning just like you have 30 seconds to reach a lost soul. And I look at it like your favorite show, the last ship we've been watching this together <laughs> <laughs> And on this, the show, the last ship, uh, it's so stupid, but like there's this virus that broke out. And then the way that they spread the virus on season three is that it's now airborne. And so now they spread the cure to the virus through airborne droplets when they talk to somebody in close proximity. And so if you look at it that way, there's this virus uh, that is separation and sin, and um, basically you are without eternal life. And in order to do that, we have this awesome responsibility to get in close proximity to people, just talk for a little bit to to plant that seed, and then they're rid of the virus. Um, I would say that the elevator pitch has to come out of love inside your heart. Yeah. And I'm not saying you don't have love for Christ. I'm saying just work on telling people how much you love Christ. Yeah. Because if you think you don't have something to give, but everybody has something to give and it's actually the cure for someone. I don't ever want to force anything on anybody because right. I can't um the Holy Spirit is the one who knocks on the door of your heart 
And I can't knock on that door. All I can do is just give somebody an opportunity. And that's what I saw at the gun show yesterday. There is this woman who was there and it was apparent she was fighting for the other kingdom because I mean, it was just her outward appearance was like things you would not wear even in East Texas before yeah. you'd be called a witch or something like that. Yeah. And so she was wearing these things and I purposefully asked Holy Spirit in my heart, I said, what do you want to say to this person? And I just went up to her, introduced myself, paid her compliments on the things she was selling at the table. And that was it. And I walked away and just like shared the love. Mm -hmm. And would you call that a win or a loss? Because I didn't sit there and go through the sinner's prayer, say you're going to die and go to hell and all this other stuff. All I did was I went up to her and I was like, I'm going to tell you about a man that I love that changed my life. And I want to show you the same opportunity. And you're a powerful person. And you could either choose to do that and, and walk in that, or you can choose not to do that. But I'm not going to sit there and beat down the door. Yeah. I'm just coming with the cure of the virus. Do you want the cure or do you not want the cure? That's mm. that's up to you. But I hate yeah. it when people come with, well, you, you don't want the cure. And then they jump on you with a syringe, like trying to jab a cure in your neck. Okay, so that brings up a really good point. Uh oh. Because, and I like, it's crazy, dude. When you start like trying to tally up things in your mind, you'll yeah. completely forget about stuff. And it's like, tally up what stuff? As you were just like, like earlier when I was like tallying up how many times I actually share the gospel with people, mm -hmm. like I couldn't even think of this one time that I, like it actually falls in line with what you just said. Um, but I didn't even count it as like that was me sharing the gospel. Yeah. It was uh, in my mind, it was me sharing kindness. But it was me and Hector and we were in California and he has a friend out there named George who when I tell you I had a conversation with this man that completely changed my life. Yeah. And like beforehand, I was crippled with shame, which is how this whole thing ties in as well. Um, and then like a newfound perspective that I had on shame. It, it, I left that table with it melted off of me, mm. but we had a waitress who sat us down at the table and she was having a bad day mm -hmm. and like was extremely short with us. Uh, if we took too long on our drink orders, she was like made sure that we were aware, like I have other tables that I need to get to mm -hmm. like, and, and she was just not a good person to be around that day. Mm. And, after about two encounters with her getting this vibe, I turned to Hector and I turned to George. I was like, guys, I think God wants to say something to our waitress. Mm. And I was like, I don't know what it is yet, but I feel like there's something there. Like she's obviously having a bad day. Mm -hmm. I think that we can bring encouragement to her. Yeah. And after a few moments, like she came back to the table. And I was like, Hey, I don't know if you know Jesus or if you even like him, but I just feel like he wants you to know like he's so proud of you and like wow. he knows that you're doing the best you can. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And when I tell you it was a night and day difference with this yeah. chick, all of a sudden she's gravitating to our table yeah. and wanting to hang around and like listen yeah. to what we're talking about. It it just, everything shifted after that. Yeah. And I didn't say the sinner prayer. No, I didn't, didn't like try to save her. No. All I knew was in that moment, God wanted to say, I see you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I know you're trying your best. Yeah. That's it. Because you know no what you brought? Answer. You Please. brought hope to the situation. Mm. See, what she was dealing with, I mean, just as you're saying this stuff, yeah. if she's dealing with doubt or whatever it is, unbelief, or just having a bad day, you brought the currency of hope mm. into a situation that she didn't have hope. And yeah. as soon as you said, your father sees this or Jesus sees this and stuff, you took something that seemed hopeless or whatever situation and you said, ooh, we're going to put this right here. Yeah. And then it changes the whole atmosphere. Yeah. And that's gospel. It, it doesn't have to be, I mean, people put so much pressure on themselves. And I think mm -hmm. that is the enemy right there. Because if he can get you off focus and say, you don't know enough scripture, you don't know enough this. Uh, I mean, the whole point of the mosaic. Mm-hmm it's broken shards coming together and making a beautiful piece. You have yeah. broken pieces in your life and you're like, okay, let me tell you about my broken day yeah. and let me give you some hope. And it obviously changed her whole yeah. experience. Yeah. And it's so crazy that I didn't even think about that as like sharing the gospel, but that 100% is. Yeah. And you're right. Like the enemy wants us to uh, disqualify ourselves before like even stepping foot on the race. Yeah. And 
that's the other side of it is it's not an actual race. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. racing makes puts pressure. Yeah. And like you said, like we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And um I just I couldn't just even moments before or earlier on this podcast couldn't even see myself as doing that and then noticing I have done this. Yeah. And I need to be bolder in it, I feel like. Like, that's something that I achieve for. Like, I don't yeah. feel like a, it's a, I'm not getting to heaven if I don't, yeah. you know, like, recruit soldiers. Yeah. Um, but personally, like, I want to, <laughs> so this comes from a music festival, but it is a phrase that I absolutely adore, and that is radiate positivity. Mm. And that's the slogan of Bonnaroo. But Love when I tell you the first time I went to Bonnaroo and I walked around and I didn't feel like anyone was looking at anybody in a judging way. Yeah. I literally was just like, this is how the church needs to be. Yeah. Like I need to feel this way when I walk into church and I do not feel this way when I walk into church. Um, even today, dude, I almost didn't go today. Ooh. Like I almost talked myself out of going to church. And, uh, cause we were, y'all were doing the home church here. Yeah. Like I had to clean up a little bit from the ha- house and I was going to let that be my excuse to not go. And I just, uh, I, I got to the point where it's like, I need the worship. Yeah. Like I, that's, that's what I need. Yeah. And so I'll go for worship, but I'll leave after worship's done is, was my thought going into church today. Yeah. And, um, worship was absolutely amazing to come on like absolutely amazing yeah. today. and i needed that um but i felt such shame walking into church today mm. and like sorry this is where it gets real um like i feel like i've let so many people down Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've let you down and I feel like I've let my family down. And I just feel this weight of shame. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I personally just want to crawl under a rock and never see anyone ever again. No, oh, man. And I know that that's not what I need. Yeah. In fact, before I went and made the decision that I was going to go to church today, I'm reading a book called soul reset. Yeah. And I just finished it this morning. Um, in the last chapter, uh, I think the guy that wrote the book, I think his name is Junius, which is a super cool name. Yeah. He is comparing. (laughs) It's a fun name to say Junius. You can't say Junius and somebody else not say Junius. Exactly. (laughs) It's too close to Julius. But he, <laughs> he's he's comparing the shame that Peter felt when he denied Jesus three times. Wow. And the shame that Judas felt by betraying him. And he's walking through it and he's like, Peter turned to community. And he allowed others to speak truth into him. Come on. Where Judas turned to isolation. Yep. And then took his own life. Yeah. And I was just like, I need to turn into community. Yeah. And I'm in a leadership uh, coaching group and we have a text group that we're all in. And for this entire month, dude, I didn't say anything in it. And like, I had to text them today. I texted them a screenshot of the page that I read where he talks about turning towards community. I said, I got to say, I'm sorry guys, because like I, I've turned to isolation yeah. and I haven't opened up here and like, I need to. Yeah. And, um, th- I was met with an amazing amount of encouragement from them, but that's when I decided like, I'm going to go to church yeah, and I'm just going to go to worship at least cause I'll get some community there. And I mean, it is just the presence of God in worship today was so accepting. Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect that. Um, I expected to feel distant 
I expected to feel like I had to work at it to feel God's presence. That's what I was expecting going into today. Yeah. And so when, I mean, the first song they sang, it was like God was just there giving me a hug. Yeah. And we let shame come into our lives and tell us lies that prevent us from experiencing God in his fullness and his acceptance. Yeah. Because it's the thoughts of, I haven't done enough. Yeah. Or I've done enough wrong to disqualify any good that I'll do in my life. And that is unbelievably crippling because there's a hopelessness that comes with, with the shame. Yeah. And feeling like, like disqualified it's the best word i can i can think of that i feel i feel disqualified yeah <laughs> that's heavy man yeah it's the way of the kingdom of darkness is always three things is to still kill and destroy everything that the darkness wants to do is steal from you the time in your life the years in your life the joy in your life it wants to kill you and physically, but that also means spiritually, like kill any kind of life that you have inside you. And the ultimate goal is to destroy you, but not just you, but your legacy and the people around you and everything that you have. And it's always that vicious spiral out of control that starts with the voice of shame. If you had to, I think one of the perfect examples looking at life of shame would be something that everybody loves, the original Lion King. Yes. And shame is scar. Mm. And the hyenas are doubt and unbelief and bitterness and anger and all these things that yeah. come after you. But the the scar is always telling you, the scars in your whoa. The scars mm-hmm. in your life are always telling you <laughs> that you're not good enough. Yeah. You killed your opportunity. You killed your Mufasa in your life. Yeah. You're not royalty anymore. You need to run away and never come back is what he says in the movie. Run away mm-hmm. and do not come back. Yep. And as soon as you do, do that, then darkness comes in. And then what does he say in the next line? Come on, we're prophesying through Lion King. He says, kill him to yeah. the hyenas. Yeah. Because the darkness doesn't play fair. Yeah. And the reason I bring that up is because darkness did that to you today. The voice of shame is completely different from the voice of conviction, and that's what the Holy Spirit brings. When the Holy Spirit comes in, she'll always bring in just this voice of peace and and uh, joy and no confusion and says, all right, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, we shouldn't have done this because this is not who you are and you're acting like somebody that you're not. Shame comes in and says, you messed up. You've got to make amends for it, Judas. Go hang yourself. Or go throw back the money and and get back in and try and make up enough amends to bring yourself back into the good graces of God. And then we can work on your salvation after that. Holy Spirit is completely different. So the next time you hear voices like, you're not good enough, uh, you got to do this, this, and this to feel accepted again, then you automatically know it's a voice of shame. We are... uh, experiencing technical difficulties okay we're back on we got a new camera and oh yeah to all of it our, cut off at 30 minutes like i thought i would our mosers out there we got a new camera we did we did we got a new camera we're working on getting our other cameras too yes we are we're growing guys we're, we're growing. growing lots of growth you're seeing it in real time <laughs> yes i'll keep going please sorry no that that, that was it so you hit on this line that uh, Junius spoke on as well, and he said the root of shame is a sense of betrayal, but it's betrayal to yourself. It's when you betray something that you strongly believe in or that you receive as who you are. Yeah. The second that happens is where you start to feel shame. Yeah. And that shame is broken down to the betrayal that you feel. Yeah. And so like, if you magnify glass straight on shame, yep. To find the beauty, you can kind of start there. And it's the fact that 
you feel this betrayal because it's not who you are. And so the beauty in this is that you're not what you did. That's good. Yeah. Spot and on. you're not what you said. You're not how you behaved. Yeah. That is not you. Like, and, and so that gives me hope in going, okay, like the shame that I feel around whatever circumstance, there's the fact that I'm not that. Yeah. And that I had a bad day. Yeah. Or like stress got to me or whatever the circumstances are that led you to whatever downfall you felt. Yeah. That's not who you are. That's right. It's not your And identity. so the hope is you can still get back to who you are. Yeah. I can still get back to who I am. And I'm still learning and finding out who I am. And I've listened to a lot of culture. I've listened to a lot of what other people might think that I am long enough to know that that is so empty mm. and that that's not who I am. Yeah. And it's not even the voice in my head because a lot of people think the voice in their head is them. It's not more times than not. It's not them. It's either influenced by culture or it's influenced by, I mean, there's so many things that can influence your thoughts, but, um, I, for the longest time, that's what I, I struggled with was the thoughts in my head are who I am. Yeah. And, uh, do you remember Stephen LeBlanc? I love Stephen Block. I love him too. And I'm being serious because I yes. really know who he is. Yeah. Okay. Because no, 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 sometimes no. I'm like, I love I could, I could John tell Legend. I know the difference enough. Yes. <laughs> the the viewers might not. They might be like, it's the John Legend thing, but no. Yeah. No. So I've got yeah. He has this amazing s- statement that he made and it, it helped me significantly with my thought life. Come on. Where he was like, We can't prevent birds from flying over our heads, but we can prevent them from building nests in our hair. Ooh. And it's like, I cannot stop a bird if it chooses to fly over my head. Yeah. If a thought enters your head, you have a choice into either, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, accept it, accept it or entertain. Okay. You can either entertain that thought Okay. And like, let it play out. So let it, let it stay in your, look, we have this uh, saying, I don't even know if you know about it now, but it stays in your head rent free. And it's like, it's a, it's a Gen Z thing. <laughs> and that um, makes sense though. That's, but it's staying it's in your head rent free. Yeah. And so like you let it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so like you let it, you, like, you let it marinate in your brain. Yeah. And that's allowing the bird to build the nest in mm-hmm. your hair. When you could just say that's not who I am Mm. or that's not how I think and it's not how I want to think. Yeah. Like I could be rude to people and and like at the end of the day be like I don't want that to be me. Yeah. Just because I was rude doesn't mean it is who I am. Yeah. And so for me personally I'm finding out it's that amazing song. He tells me who I am. It's the uh, I think it's Cody Carnes. Uh, All he says I am. Need you to sing. I don't know. I don't have a singing voice. I, mm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about unless you sing it. No, uh, okay. it's the he whispers in my ear, tells me that I'm fearless. Uh, well, kind of. How's the how's the melody? <laughs> I can't give it to you. I'm sorry. I'll drop like, a beat. One for you. day, one day I'll sing on 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 the pod. You you already rapped. Faster. You already rapped on the pod. So. I need you to rap this Cody Carnes song. I cannot do that. No, I couldn't do that to Cody, and I couldn't do that to my listeners. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that. Um, it's it's that. It battles the lies that I believe about myself. I think that's why it's so strong to me. Mm-hmm. Because. He says I'm fearless. Yeah. So here, this is this is diving into the conversation that I had with George at that table. Okay. Um. We were talking about sin, and I asked George. I was like, "Can you define sin for me?" And he goes. Sin is anything that makes you feel distant from God. 
And I was like, okay. So with that definition, am I correct in saying that shame is sin? And he was like, yeah, I think that with that definition, you can definitely say shame, shame is sin. And I'm not saying this to put any condemnation or shame on anyone because this is where it shifted in my brain. I thought back to the woman caught in adultery. Wow. Yeah. And it's after Jesus drew that line in the sand and said, he without sin, please cast the first stone. And they left her alone. And he turns to her and he says, where are your condemners? And she says, I don't, they, there, there are none. And he says, I condemn you or then I condemn you not. Or yeah. in other words, then I hold nothing against you. Yeah. Also, I forgive you is in that state. Yeah. I think that Jesus is very purposed when he opens his mouth and he says anything. Yeah. And so that point in my brain, cause I have a very logical brain. He has forgiven all of her sin. And then he makes the statement, go and sin no more. Yeah. I personally believe in that statement, he was not talking to her about her adultery. I think he was addressing her shame Boom. and saying, leave this place and don't take this with you. Wow. You can go now and sin no more. Do not carry the shame of this incident in this very private sin that was now made very public. He had already forgiven her for the adultery. Wow. So when he says it again, I think he's addressing the shame because I can't imagine the shame that she must have felt. Yeah. And so it's very interesting to me how shame is a paralyzer. Yeah. And there's something to that where it's like, it wants you, if, I, if I'm if i putting um, motive on shame as if it's a person, it's it wants you to stay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't want you to move. It doesn't want you to progress. Mm-hmm. It almost just wants you to meditate on your, your failures. Yeah. And when we meditate on our failures... Well, I don't know if this is in the Bible or not, but it's coming to my brain. What we meditate eventually becomes what we are, right? Like if we meditate on something, eventually that's what is produced. Yeah, there's a saying, um, I think it's by Bill Johnson, it's whatever you you become what you worship, you become what you behold. If you behold him... You become more like him. If you behold shame and all your mistakes, you become more like those things. Yeah. And so I think when we're meditating on our failures, Mm -hmm. it's not that we produce more failures, but we can't get past it. You try and compensate for those things. Mm -hmm. If you look, because as you're telling me this, you look all the way back at the garden And it's interesting. In fact, I want to hear some of our followers, what their response to this question is like, what was the first thing that happened after Adam and Eve sinned that God did? Mm. And if if you think about it, like what in your perception, like what was one of the first things he did? Like, did he kick down a cloud and bust out of heaven and say, where did y'all go? What do you Mm -hmm. think you're doing? Like, was he angry? Now he came searching for them. Came searching for them. Did he already know where they were? Yes. And he he was gentle in that approach because when I think about that, you read scripture and he's asking, where are you? And he's talking to Adam. Yeah. He already knew where they were. Yeah. And what were they doing? They were in shame. And what was it doing? Paralyzing them in fear. Yeah. They were afraid and they were hiding. Why? 
because we had sinned and we were ashamed and because we we're naked. And, and now they see their mistake and they see all their mistakes. And so they begin to hide. I think shame loves to do that. It loves to put you in that place where hide from God. Let's get some fig leaves. Let's try and fix this ourselves because God's going to show up and he's going to be ticked that you did something. God shows up and not only does he seek them gently because he can just like when I'm playing hide and go seek with my kids, I know where AJ is. But then I just like out of the corner of my eye, okay, AJ, where are you? And I try and bring them in, try and bring them in out of hiding. It's the same thing God doing, the same thing with us, lovingly bringing them back into community. Okay, you messed up. He makes clothes for them after that. Is that an angry God who's going to go and skin an animal and make clothes for you so you're not naked and ashamed? And then he leads them out of the garden and says, okay, you messed up and I'm going to fix this. It's going to be okay. Let's get out of the garden because I don't want you to live in an eternal state separated from me and, and eat from the tree of life. All right, let's come this way. A loving God does that. I think it's, I think it's, there's a, um, I forgot who said this, but it stuck in my mind. He says, we're going to be, um, what's the word? We're going to be so not flabbergasted, but like taken back and like cringing, I guess is a good word, mm. but they didn't say this in the same, but he said, when we step into heaven and see God who he, as he is and see how much we thought about him of how much he hated us or despised us or was angry with us. And when we actually see how he really feels, when we step into eternity and see that God, it's going to make us cringe of how wrong we were of how much he actually loves us and how wrong we get it on earth that we think we have to do everything ourselves because he hates us. And God's finding every loophole to keep us out of heaven. When God has done every loophole to get us into heaven, to bring us into community with him. Yep. So, yeah, because I think the lie is sin. And that's why I like the definition that George said, um, because the lie is sin distanced us from God. Mm. But the truth is it makes us feel distant yeah. from God. Yeah. It's perceived. It's not true. Yeah. Because God doesn't actually run away from you. No. He runs towards sin. Yep. Like a fireman to fire. Yeah. And I think that that is something I desperately need in my life today is just knowing that God is near and not afar. Yeah. I think that I need to be able to get to a place where I can not just forgive myself for the betrayals that I feel against myself, but for empathy to show up because I think we can be so hard on ourselves, dude. Like I don't think anyone will ever talk to us the way that we talk to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's why self-talk is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, And I love, I was talking about this with someone months ago and they had showed me like they put uh all these affirmations on their mirror Mm -hmm. they're like every day i read these and i'm like i need to make myself an affirmation mirror because i do not talk to myself that way at all and i probably still go against it (laughs) you're a winner no i'm not not. (laughs) yeah you're a loser and look in the mirror wrote this yeah i was a liar i wrote it (laughs) (laughs) you're a loser (laughs) It'd probably have the neg- the, the uh, opposite effect. <laughs> Tino, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, oh, no. So what'd you do this week? Oh, well, back on Mosaic. <laughs> I did a hate mirror. A hate mirror. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's why we need to make each other's affirmation mirrors. <laughs> and be like, oh, that's true. So that's the thing. Is like I am that's so awesome. much more gracious and loving. And like I, uh, I was, <laughs> when I was married to Kaylee, like if she had bad self-talk, I literally would pull down a mirror. Like if we're always, we were always in a car, <laughs> but I'd flip the mirror down and I'd be like, okay, like I need to hear your favorite thing about yourself. I need yeah. to hear three things that you like about yourself. Ooh. And like, I was adamant on that, but I can't do that to myself. 
Do it right now. Go. Oof. Oh boy. Did you see my face? Yeah, I did. I saw it immediately. Oh immediately crap. He shipped. actually like, called me out on it. All right. Like, oh, that's things. how that feels. Yeah, that's, how, that's yeah. not nice. Welcome at all. to the mosaic where we don't plan crap. <laughs> all right. Three things. Let's oh go. gosh. Okay. Um I I am funny. Yeah, you I, are. I, I like that I'm funny. Okay. It's one. Um, I like that I can see the positive in a lot of things. Mm. I'm very optimistic. You are. Um, and I do feel like I'm very loving towards people. Yeah. Very gracious. Those are my three favorite things. <sighs> you know what I like about you? Oh. When you said this, you said we see it about other people. <laughs> yeah. I literally have your name in my phone is Goose because I call you Goose. Yeah. But I have Goose. Peace is his dwelling. I think you have peace wherever you go. I didn't mean to bring tears. I'm so sorry. All right. Thank you no, for joining good. us today. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's it's good. I need this. You really do. Because have peace, I have dude. not felt peace internally in months. Whoa. Like I've I have been in a constant state of like searching. Yeah. And like I think it was Jenna Mountain on one of the episodes of The Basement. No, 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 no. It was Nancy Houston when I went on her pod. Um, She said the human brain. I'm going to butcher this statement. Butcher it. Or statistic. I'm going to butcher the statistic. But I think it's somewhere around your brain is searching seven to eight times per second and asking, am I safe? Yeah. And so having safety is such a key element to just being human. And feeling safe is so important for us. Yeah. And I have not felt safe. And I have not felt like I have the ability to just (sighs) breathe. Yeah. I felt like I've had to atone. I felt like I've had to make up for my mistakes. I feel like I've had to find the answers and mm. and provide for myself. Yeah. And like I think I'm hitting the exhaustion point on it. Yeah. Where it's like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And that is where I think that God is standing there with his arms open and saying, will you give it to me? Yeah. And it's hard for me. It's hard for me to give one because I feel like it's not it's not a gift like it's not pretty yeah it's messy right like it's right. it's flawed right this isn't a diamond ring it's a piece of coal yeah that can potentially be a diamond yeah but it's not there yet so why would I give you a rock that's how I feel mm. when I can try my best to make it better yeah. But he's like, just give it to me as it is. Yeah. Well, um, I think that as humans, we, we don't give the space needed for things like this. Or at least I feel like I don't give myself the space needed. Yeah. And to truly process this, like, dude, I have done so many other things, like, to try to distract from these thoughts. Yeah. Versus just, like, voicing them and sitting in it and finding the truth in it. That's the thing. That's why I love what we're doing with this this show. 
Yeah. Because many times I'll sit down and here's a little peek behind the curtain of how I choose these episodes to Yes, please tell me. I know your planner wants to know yeah. so badly. Let me take a note. Um, it's what I'm struggling with. Yeah. I take what I'm struggling with and I say, let's talk about it because I desperately need to talk about it. Yeah. And more importantly, I need to find the beauty in this. Because at this point, when I started this episode, I had no inkling to ever see beauty and shame. It was, I have disqualified myself, I have done too much wrong, and there's no redemption for me. Yeah. But then being brought back to the remembrance of the first time that I felt that, and that conversation I had with George... And the idea that Jesus was addressing the shame in this woman's life. He cared so much for her, not just because of where she was and not to save her from what she was doing, but to go deeper into her mental health. Yeah. And say, do not weigh your, don't, don't weigh yourself too much on this. Like, it's too heavy for us. We're not, I don't think we were ever meant to carry shame, dude. Absolutely not. Like that was never intended. Okay. And I mean, we can go on so many rabbit trails with that because it's just, that's, that's what my brain tries to do is it's like, <laughs> why does this thing exist if we weren't ever supposed to feel it? But because it's because we're in a broken world. It's the, <clears throat> It is the partnering in the wrong kingdom. Mm. You partner with God in the kingdom of light with faith. Yeah. God, you say you're going to do something, so I believe you're going to do it. I, I don't see it yet, but I know your character, and I know that you're a good God. Mm -hmm. You're faithful. You're going to do it. I take my currency, which is my faith, and I invest in you, and I know that you're going to do it. Shame in the opposite kingdom is the same way. I take my shame and I partner it with you, dark one, to help me fix the mess I made so I can be back in the good graces of God. Mm. So let me try and do it in my own strength, yeah. which is the opposite of gospel because gospel is <laughs> not by any works that any man should boast, yeah. but only because of what he did. Only yeah. because of his grace, only because of his mercy. So faith is to kingdom of light as shame is to the kingdom of darkness. And I think that that really showcases the beauty of what you said about God came searching for Adam and Eve immediately after the first fall. Because I could sit here today and say, of course, God's not a mean God who's who's excruting anger at me and my sin because Jesus died on the, on the cross. But before Jesus ever died, his characteristic towards sin was to run to it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just because of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's because his true heart and his true characteristic is to come to the wounded yeah. and come to the hurting. I have a harder time, which this may be another podcast for another day, to dive in to this level, but um, people accept that, that he came and he died and he showed mercy and grace and he did it all for them to cover mm -hmm. the sin and death and the grave and shame and everything that comes along with it. it I have a struggle sometimes of thinking he did it. Um, and I've shared this with you before that mm -hmm. I'm the, uh, one of those things on those infomercials, you, you buy this, uh, 
Tupperware set right now, and you get your Tupperware and your utensils and everything. But wait, there's more. Yeah. And then there's always a stinking like knife sharpener. <laughs> yeah. And so or a book light or a book light. Like, <laughs> yeah. You get your book light too. Yeah. The struggle I have sometimes is I 100% like all the things I've shared on this episode, like 100% believe, but I have a hard time not feeling like the knife sharpener Mm -hmm. that God came in the flesh and gave his life for you and for me and for all of creation. But then uh, all the people that are doing the most and all Mm -hmm. of his disciples and all the things that we see and then, oh, wait, but there's more. Daniel is also a part of that deal. So you also get him too. Yeah. That the personal, I'm an add on. I'm an endorsement. I'm just a, Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died for humanity, and since I'm a part of humanity, yeah, I guess I'm thrown in there too, kind of thing. And that's, I mean, I'm just being raw and real. Sometimes I have that thing of, God, thank you that you died for us, but I need to know the God who died for me that saw Daniel 2,000 years ago. That's that's the voice of shame that I partner with. So it's interesting today... We sing a song, and the lyrics were. Um, sing it for me. <laughs> you so badly want me to sing this episode. Just, if you're not going to sing Cody Cards, <laughs> at least sing the one we sang today. Uh, no, but I'll tell you the lyrics. Okay, sure. As soon as I think of it, it's the. Um, it was the song that says, "I don't want anything else. I don't need anyone else. Yeah, you are my one thing." And you say that over and over and over I again. I can hear it in my right? head. Well, just walk first. No. But what wrecked me today was as we were singing that, the perspective of God flipping that and singing to you that he doesn't want anything else. Mm. He doesn't need anything else. Yeah. You are his one thing. Is how I felt while we were singing that. And I almost wanted to share it, but I didn't know who to share it to. And that's interesting that you bring this up. But it is the fact that, like, if you, Daniel, were the only person on planet Earth, he still would have sent his son to Mm -hmm. die just for you. And that is so. Like, like I, I, I relate to you and in, in how, like, hard to comprehend that is. Yeah. And how, with the shame in our lives, like, it makes us feel like we're, we're the add-on. Yeah. But the reality is... We're not. We're not. Mm-hmm. And I don't know anything more practical than to to try to listen to that song from his perspective. Yeah. Um, I shared on one of the episodes of The Basement this time where I was driving down to Palestine and I had my playlist going. And there was this song uh, by Snow Patrol uh, called Chasing Cars. Uh-huh. And uh, do you know that song? Chasing cars. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know what you're, I'm the, with you. It's the um, like if I just lay here, would you lie with me, and just forget the world? Yeah, I know that song. I really do. And yeah, and um, I had to record your camera again. Sorry. Um, I was listening to it, and it, and it stopped. And I felt the Lord say, play that song again. And so I was like, okay. And so I play it back. He's like, this time, like, listen to the words. Like, pay attention to the lyrics. So I'm paying attention to the lyrics. And when you look at them, can you pull up the lyrics real fast, actually? Because I didn't get to do this on the basement, but I'm going to take my time with this one. I was having to go off of memory and... I felt rushed in it. But there's a specific verse that like completely wrecks me. It's called Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. If 
<laughs> what? Yellow card is oh Tim's yellow card. card. I do love yellow card. Yeah, Ocean Avenue. We're gonna go through that one next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm on it. Chasing okay. cars. Let me see the lyrics real fast. Oh no. Okay. So he said, like, pay attention to the lyrics. And then when the song ended, he said, play it again. And so I, I cued it back up again. He's like, this time, I want you to position this song to me. Ooh. Yeah. And, and, and hear these words as if you're saying it to me. Yeah. And one of the things that always wrecks me when I hear the song now. When I find it, mm, here it is. It says, if I lay here, if I just lay here, would you lie with me and just forget the world? Forget what we're told before we get too old. Show me a garden that's bursting into life. Mm. All that I am all that I ever was is here in your perfect eyes. They're all I can see. And it's just like this beautiful picture. I mean, it's, a, it's, this, it's, it's this beautiful love song. But when you position it to God. Yeah. I mean, the presence of, his, of, of God hit my car like nothing else. And I felt him so strongly in it. And this is a secular song. But secular. like, it's your heart matter. It's how you're you're positioning your heart. Yeah. And he just loves us so much that he wants to hear our heart and hear how we love him. Mm. And he reciprocates it. Yeah. Back to us. Yeah. Because it's as if he's saying, will you just lie with me? Mm -hmm. and just forget the world like forget the ambition forget your shame forget your shortcomings and just be with me mm -hmm. that's really all he wants like at the end of the day god doesn't want to tell you everything that you've done wrong in your life yeah he just wants to spend time with you yeah he wants you to get to know him because he loves you so much that he formed you just to have a relationship with him. Yeah. And we don't think about that often. And it's just like, I'll say this one more statement. And then if you have anything, I want you to, I want you to talk. Um, but it's always floored me that we have this all knowing all powerful, all creative God of the universe who loves us so much that he'll operate in our lives in the tiniest box we put him in. Mm -hmm. And if we're just like, okay, God, I'll give you two hours on Sundays. He is faithful to show up in those two hours. And my thought in it is, God, if I can just break down my boxes and give it all to you, mm -hmm. you would be faithful to fill that. Yeah. And not just the tiniest spaces that I give you. Mm -hmm. Because you have shown that you are faithful to show up there. And when I choose to sit down and get quiet and think and like position my heart towards him he meets me there yeah and i don't do it often enough yeah he's a god of five loaves and two fishes and he would have been if that kid would have had half a loaf and a fin he still would have multiplied it mm. because the question wasn't how much he said, what do you have? Yeah. He didn't say how much anointing, how much of your own strength are you going to make it through this with? He says, well, what do you have? And more times than not, I come to God 
before the miracle, and I'm like, I ain't got nothing. Yeah. I got a whole lot of doubt, and I got a whole lot of insecurity, and I've got a whole lot of wanting to make a plan. Huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, all right, we can work with that. Yeah. What he's looking for is trust and even just a mustard-sized seed of faith, just the tiniest bit of, God, I've seen you do stuff before and I have a sneaking suspicion you can do it again, mm -hmm. but I have a whole lot of doubt. And he's not asking about the doubt because that's not what he partners with. He partners with what I'm bringing to the table of, God, you can do it again, and he does. Yeah. So. Well, I think that that is uh, that is the deepest episode. <laughs> it is a very deep episode. But before we go, Sam's going to sing. And it's a very necessary episode. I'm not going to sing. Sam, sing us out. And I'm not going to sing us out. Just yellow card. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a line of Ocean Avenue. <laughs> yeah. Sing Ocean <laughs> Avenue as we leave our <laughs> listeners today. I am such a diehard yellow card <laughs> fan. I literally drove to Ocean Avenue when I was in California just to actually see it. And listen to the song. And please just, tell oh, me I you. De definitely. Okay. Def I can't do it. You get there and you to listen to like Creed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why? I, just, I just put on Creed <laughs> with arms wide open on Ocean Avenue. <laughs> there, I sang for you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I gave, I gave you a little Very bit of Creed. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. Well, guys, like I said at the beginning of this episode, we don't have things put together. We're not nope. perfect. We're not teachers. We're not anything other than who we are. And that is what this episode and that was what the show is about. It is finding the beauty and the hardships and the broken pieces. And uh, thank you for your perspective because I highly value your perspective. You spoke into me in this episode. Wow. And I, I needed it. Needed it. And I wouldn't want to do this show with anyone else, honestly. Like... It's actually kind of funny. I thought we were ending, but we're not. Um, it's actually <laughs> kind of funny because oh, our relationship, yeah. um, I was thinking about this the other day, like we have so much fun together and like for years, mm -hmm. our dynamic was, that's all we did. We just had fun. Like we were just laughing and we we're very lighthearted. Yes. And like there was a point where I was like, I don't think I've ever had like an actual serious conversation with Daniel <laughs> no. for a long time. Yeah. And I think that it was, we built up so much relational equity with each other. Yeah. That for this season, I'm able to have these deeper conversations than we ever would have had. Yeah. And I love this space for that reason yeah. alone. Is I get to, I get to see your heart in a deeper, more rich way in these years where I appreciate it. And need it more, yeah. Than when we were in high school, just farting around. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Farting around. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I didn't want to say other words that I would have said. <laughs> oh, thank you. This was an edited Sam. Yes. <laughs> well, bro, that means a lot to me. Thank you. It, yeah. It's so true. We've spent so many years just jacking around doing like stupid videos and stuff like that. And yeah. we did say that. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we've ever had one good intelligent conversation. <laughs> and I, I still don't think some of our conversations are intelligent, but, uh, but we, we have fun for sure. We do have and fun. And I do think that, that we are having these great conversations. I'm glad that we're recording them. Yeah. And so guys, thank you for taking some time and uh, spending it with us and just kind of looking into how we find beauty and hardships. Um, I keep coming back to that line, but it's it's one of my favorite things about this show, and it it brings me so much value. And so I hope you guys have a good one, and we'll see you on the next episode.